What if I told you the key to building generational wealth could come down to simply picking your favorite country? See, there are one or two emerging economies out there right now who are working away and will become one of the next global superpowers. Investing in that country today could very well set you up for life. Interesting. Seriously. So I set out on a mission to find the countries that are going to see insane growth over the next 30 years. But first, we need to rewind to a few days earlier. I made a simple discovery. If you invested $500 per month into the S&P 500 for the last couple decades, you'd make millions of dollars. And that's great and all, but I wasn't around four decades ago, and I didn't make millions off the US turning into a global superpower. And then the realization got even worse. I saw China's market growth and economic growth. Here's me thinking America's the king of the investing hill, but meanwhile, China's walking up to the main stage and laying the smack down. Again, I missed the wave and the millions. But this gave me an idea. What if I discovered the best country to invest in before it blows up? Now, there are risks. I'm not Warren Buffett. I don't have some kind of crystal ball. I mean, who am I to think I can even do this? But then there's another voice in my head. Just do it! I needed to try and find out which country is going to blow up and have insane growth. It would benefit us all if I could. And this time, I wasn't going to be late to the party. But to do that, I needed a plan. So with a little bit of Googling research and 500 IQ thinking, I figured out my play. And it was based on this question. What makes the US such a reliable draw for investment? And it came down to three factors, regulation, growth, stability. You see, for a country to have insane growth, it's going to be an emerging economy. It's got to start small, right? But emerging economies typically come with a ton of extra risk. They have political trouble that can turn the country upside down, war, revolution, or their currency could go as wild as Venezuela's. So I needed to know how to break down these three factors. Regulation was my first step. If a country had a bad record of regulation or corporate governance, it might as well be the Wild West. Not only can companies do all kinds of shady, unethical stuff, which I don't want, but there'd be little to no investor protection in place, which means that by getting involved with a country like that, I'd pretty much be playing Russian roulette with my money. <laughs> yeah. I don't want that. A good way to ensure myself against this was to use measures like the Heritage Foundation's Index of Economic Freedom. This index measures a country by breaking it down into four categories. Rule of law, government size, regulatory efficiency, and open markets. Boring. I know. But in essence, they want to measure how free and healthy a country's markets are, while its people's rights are protected, and the government is working efficiently. It's a big ask. The closer a country scores to 100, the better it is. So it should come as no surprise to me that countries like Singapore, which looks like it traveled here from the future, ranks near the top. But while it'd be easy for me just to run through the Heritage Foundation list, there's more to it than just that. Next up is growth. This sounds like a no-brainer, but if I'm going to invest in a country, I need that country to show signs of progress. So what did I look for? Well, these days, government debt is pretty wild, and inflation is all over the place. Most countries are having a pretty rough go at it right now. An emerging economy should ideally be growing by close to 6% per year, almost two to three times more than developed countries. As these countries grow, there's more and more demand for goods and services, especially when they've got higher populations. And then there's stability, which is massive. I needed to find some certainty that the countries that I was looking at weren't just going to tank after I invested. Because emerging markets are great, but if the country they're attached to politically implodes, gets invaded, or mismanages itself into oblivion, then my market is going down with it. So aside from the obvious stability issues like the looming threat of war or political turmoil, currency issues are a huge cause of underperformance in emerging markets. When you invest in that market, you're exposing yourself to the fluctuations of its currency. So it's useful to understand how stable that currency is. Emerging economies typically have debt between 15 and 80% of their GDP. I needed to make sure that GDP was outpacing the government debt of these investable countries. Otherwise, the whole thing is unsustainable and will come crashing down. My sweet spot was anything below a ratio of 50%. On top of this, I needed countries where their balance of payments showed plenty of money flowing in rather than out. It's really useful to think of a country like a massive business. How much money is going in and out? And when is that money received? Mind the cash flows always. If a country has more going out than in, then there's a good chance their currency goes. And then there's inflation. 
I am sick of that word, but emerging economies are hit differently by inflation, often depending on what they export and import. If the country pumps out valuable, high-demand resources like oil or copper, they're probably going to be fine no matter how pricey their imports become. This is what helped the Saudis stay rich and afford all those crazy weddings. But if you're like India and you have some kind of reliance on agricultural products, then you're going to get slapped in the face by inflated prices. So I was nearing the end of my journey. I had the tools and the strategy to at least have a shot of finding the next big emerging markets. But I also knew my odds of making a mistake and blowing it were fairly high. Emerging markets are risky investments, but I wasn't going to let fear or worse, intelligent risk mitigation stop me. Here's what I found. Indonesia. When you think of Indonesia, you might think king cobras, crocodiles, and Komodo dragons. Scary stuff. But did you know Indonesia has the fourth largest population on Earth? It has a wealth of resources like natural gas and crude petroleum, a great location geographically with access to Asia, Oceania, and the Pacific. It scores well on the Human Development Index, which means it's easy to do business there. And even better, the government of Indonesia is taking steps to modernize, making them more investor-friendly. There's a thriving entrepreneur entrepreneurial e-commerce vein within the country, and it's the second fastest growing G20 nation from 2012 to 2020. And its debt to GDP ratio is still tracking below 50%, which is great. They also have amazing food, and that has to count for something. It's all pretty enticing. But before I tell you how to invest, we need to check out Indonesia's neighbor and today's sponsor, because if you made it this far in the video, there's a great chance you want to diversify your investments. Or maybe you just like listening to my video sound design. Fun fact, a lot of our music is custom made for each and every video. Malaysia. It's seen solid growth over the past decade, ranging from 4 to 6 percent, and enjoys many of the same geographical advantages of Indonesia. It's a major producer of rubber and palm oil, as well as large quantities of natural gas and petroleum. Its debt to GDP ratio is falling, its currency is solid, and it has a current account surplus. It's home to great manufacturing and service sectors, and a top exporter of electronical components. It's one of the most open economies in the world with a trade to GDP ratio averaging over 130% since 2010. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a solid foundation for long-term growth. Exactly what we want. Solid gold, baby. Now, what about Poland? This one might be cheating. In 2018, the FTSE Russell bumped Poland up from emerging market to developed market. But it's still growing rapidly and it's integrated with many other EU countries, namely Germany, which gives it a huge advantage. Plus, it still uses the Zloty instead of the Euro, meaning it retains financial independence. Poland's actually a crazy success story for emerging markets outside of Asia, which we'll get back to. In the last 26 years, we've seen Poland's GDP double in size, and GDP per capita jump from 32 to 70% of the EU average. It has an incredibly solid manufacturing base, producing cars, computer parts, and machinery. That said, its debt to GDP skyrocketed through the COVID pandemic to 57.1% but it's since begun to decrease. Now China. It gets a lot of press, and while it's deserved, Burn. Look at Randy Orton slithering. Oh, watch, like out, watch, out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! India is right behind it with incredible growth and a huge population to back it up. Just look at these stats. The curve speaks for itself, and its GDP growth is similarly impressive. Its per capita GDP, though, is still way behind China, and that may be a good thing for investors, because unlike China, where the middle class is distinct, India still has room for one to grow, meaning investors can benefit from citizens with more disposable income. It's also home to well-regarded U.S. listed businesses. That said, as great as India's growth has been, there are reservations. Its debt to GDP ratio has been growing to absurd levels. And its accounts are in the red, which could be made worse by global inflation. And on top of this, it scores pretty poorly on the Heritage Foundation's index. So why am I recommending it? Because when you look at the actions of the world's most dominant companies, it's clear that India's benefits outweigh its negatives. Your Amazons, Googles, Facebooks, they're all investing heavily into the country to ensure their growth. India has a huge growing population with a young, talented workforce keen to get into the tech sector. And this is great. Plus, unlike China, India is less burdened by an authoritarian government. So optimistically, it stands to do even better in the long run. 
So yeah, after a long drawn out 500 IQ journey, these are my favorite emerging economies. If you want to run with this, just know that there's never a guarantee in investing. This isn't financial advice, but the best ways to invest would be in a broad market index that tracks the countries you believe in. Like the MCSI index in Indonesia or the KLCI index tracking the biggest companies in Malaysia. Every country has an index like this and a bet on the country's index is essentially a bet on that country's economy for the long run. It's my assumption that in the coming decades, a few countries will really take the world by storm, becoming global superpowers and minting literally millions of new millionaires. Invest correctly and that can be you. From here, I'll check back in 30 years to see if my research is correct. Until then, join me on Finova, link down below, where we make investing so much more simple. I'd like to thank you so much for watching. I'm Max Maher and I hope you have a profitable day.